deliberate ignorance. Uh, I would say uh, new dispensation, political dispensation in India is very, very, uh, uh, I would say, insistent about coming out with and bringing changes in all the legislation which, which are already in place and they are also coming out with few, uh, I would say, very robust and fantastic legislations. And I name three of them. First of all, as I mentioned in my first session, that uh, Arbitration and Conciliation Act is being amended and uh, it is going to take care of those uh, 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 typical uh, grievances which everybody had about the Arbitration Act of India. First, the, under the new amended Act, you will have arbitration part. The arbitrators will be obliged to decide cases within 18 months. And if they do it, they are really, uh, uh, they will be given bonus in the, in the, in the form of keys, like we are giving to the contract cases if they are uh, executing their contract before time. And but if they are not able to do it within 18 months, plus the 30 days grace period in that event, they may be uh, non-suited for, for in future. They may be uh, blacklisted from uh, making them to sit uh, as an arbitrator, and they can be delisted from the panel of arbitrators, which is being maintained. Uh, another issue was when awards are passed, and when there are objections filed to the awards, uh, the courts used to really take a uh, lot of time. So another area of concern was we need to uh, uh, plug that hole in the law the, under the new uh, uh, the provision, the, which is the amended act, which is coming in very soon. The courts will be obliged to do it within one year. Yes, one year is still a, uh, the time that I would say going by, but we have seen in the past, it has to be done within one year. Uh, there were other issues like uh, uh, arbitrability. One of the issues was of arbitrability because we had one judgment in India, in the Supreme Court, which said if the case involves a uh, uh, disputed question of fact, in a sense, if case one party is alleging fraud against the other side, then such disputes cannot be arbitrated. But that has again been taken care of by subsequent Supreme Court judgments and by way of this legislation. We have Swiss timing is another judgment which talks about this situation. Uh, so this is about uh, uh, cost. Again, cost was another issue. Cost is again being taken care of by the Seventh Act because you will have a schedule of fees and arbitrators, as, as is happening now, it's in India, most of the arbitrations which we see today are ad hoc arbitrations. So parties are at the mercy of arbitrators. You, you cannot bargain with arbitrators because Ultimately, arbitrator is a different way. He doesn't want to be uh, But now you will have uh, this schedule of his end. And there is uh, uh, insistence on, on, on in this amended act. There's a lot of emphasis for institutional arbitration. So these are few points of arbitration act. Second act, which is second law, which is again uh, is being brought by this new dispensation, is real estate regulation bill. Because uh, Till now, in India, the real estate sector has been unregulated. So we had various stakeholders who have been taking uh, advantage, undue advantages of this unregulated sector. It is being taken care of. And third, and, uh, third uh, of our legislation, which I would, I would like to talk about in later detail, is public contract resolution of disputes. As I said, SOP we do not have. We, uh, we have been trying to uh, talk to, uh, take up the issue with uh, different stakeholders, but somehow it is not moving. But this particular bill, which is public contract resolution of dispute bill, is very, very robust. It is basically, uh, it will take care of all public contracts. Public contracts should necessarily mean the contracts awarded by the government of India and the various state governments because we are a federal structure. So, Contracts awarded by government of India, the states, and even at the local level, at the local level, panchayat level, we call it, at the village level. So any award by for a public contract will be covered under this. That necessarily means private contracts between private parties will not get covered under this. Now 
the threshold for this contract, this particular law, would be five crores in India, which is five crores and half. Obviously, government has retained this uh, power and jurisdiction to have the, the, the change this particular value, but five crore is this. Secondly, very important aspect is there will be a permanent tribunal under the Act. Like uh, in for institutional arbitration, we have a secret target, so we will have a permanent arbitration tribunal. It will be made by chairman, deputy chairman, and members. There will be permanent, uh, uh, there will be permanent uh, uh, body for that. And first of all, all claims, all disputes will be sent to the tribunal. And if any party has got any issue with regard to jurisdiction and things like this, threshold issues like we have in ICC. So this particular tribunal will deal with such threshold issues. And if they find that this dispute is capable of being sent for arbitration, then it will be sent for arbitration to the arbitrators who would be appointed from the panel of arbitrators which will be maintained by this particular body. And uh, we will have panel of experts also. So soon, uh, the government and this particular tribunal will be inviting applications for impanelment as experts. Uh, now, this particular permanent tribunal will have a uh, jurisdiction to decide itself if a particular dispute is found to be of a very, very simple nature, which more complex. Obviously, yeah. complex disputes or disputes for which we we have uh, various issues involved. This will go to the arbitration tribunal, which will be again appointed by this tribunal. And parties will have the, the, the option to choose from the panel of arbitrators maintained by this particular tribunal. And in the event of disputes, this tribunal will act as a secretary or appointing authority. Uh, this tribunal, this arbitration panel, which will be constituted for such disputes, will have to decide such disputes within 180 days. That means six months. And raise the legal duty for the case. So I would say it is a very, very good start for public contracts because uh, this area has been of great concerns because government has always been a biggest employer. And another dispute, another uh, area of concern needs to be because for most of these contracts, the employer used to retain this authority the point arbitrators, and those arbitrators used to be their own serving employees or ex-employees or one of their consultants. So that is again being taken care of by this particular issue. Yes, this particular issue is also being taken care of by the new amended arbitration act. They are also basically, uh, this act is uh, taking, uh, I would say, inspiration from IPA guidelines on conflict of interest. So this concern is again being uh, attended to. A very interesting aspect is that this permanent tribunal will have power to join parties in this arbitration, even if somebody is not a party to a particular, particular arbitration agreement. But their presence is otherwise necessary, like if you have an uh, employer, contractor, subcontractor, and things like this, you can have its other parties' interest is really getting affected by such a dispute or a process, the resolution process, then provision for joinery is also there. And uh, uh, this is one uh, uh, no, question is what will happen to those arbitration agreements where parties have agreed to have dispute resolution uh, through a particular agreed uh, process where Either they have nominated some arbitrators, or they say I will be governed by rules of a particular institution. Uh, this particular uh, bill says that default provision is that irrespective of what parties have agreed, all arbitration will get covered under this particular bill. But there is there are two exceptions. One exception is if after dispute has arisen. And thereafter, if parties still want to opt for private arbitration resolution process and they do not want to go for this particular tribunal, then they can go for this. Not based on what they had agreed earlier. That is one. Two, another exception would be 
with respect to the foreign seated arbitration. If you have a foreign seated arbitration or procedure agreed earlier, then in that case, this particular tribunal will not cover that. And apart from this, uh, the uh, uh, public contracts given for military, or for air force and army, those contracts will not get covered. And as uh, uh, has happened with SIPA and in other jurisdictions, that the government always retains uh, a power to uh, exempt a particular class of public contracts or areas from application of such law. That is the aim there. So uh, this is what uh, is all about this particular uh, uh, this new provision of, of this bill which is coming up in here. Now, few quick points in two minutes, if I have two minutes. Uh, I heard uh, my friend uh, on uh, performance bond, laws on performance bond in, uh, in, in Singapore. Uh, this is one area I would say uh, in the last week, I had occasion to defend two contractors in court where performance bonds were uh, 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 in court and they wanted an encasement on totally PMG grounds. In one case, where an employer had defaulted in, in, in providing 40% of the site and they had agreed to donate in multiple meetings, they had still refused to do that. And they rather incapacitated the contractor to execute its work, but in the high-handedness and in high-handed manner, they invoked the uh, performance guarantee, which was huge amount of money. Now, what is law in India on this? We have uh, uh, India. We started following the laws in England on this performance bond, on those payments uh, judgments of. Is paying and all the judgments which we all know from common jurisdictions. We follow those laws, but we have not somehow uh, kept track of those developments in those jurisdictions. Like uh, Singapore, in various, in many cases, we have cited Singapore judgments where inconsolability has been taken to be abroad. When Malaysia has a tribunal abroad, but in India, you would be surprised to go that in the month of June, I had gone to argue a matter in Mumbai High Court before the judge who had written in his judgment one week before I had appeared, that even if a party who had issued this uh, performance bond on the Bengaluji, even if he had these be able to so exercise case arising out of the underlying contract, injunction cannot be granted. They say in India, there was another exception which was carved apart from the uh, fraud and uh, irretrievable injury was the special equity. The special equity was brought in way back, but later on, the, all the judgments from different high courts have said even this special equity what we covered only those grounds which would be very close to the concept of irretrievable injury. So even that has been excluded. So now, what you are left with is only those two basic grounds, unconsolability is no issue. Yes, you go and argue before the court, and uh, in one ground which I argued before the same judge, and I was lucky to have that injunctive order was, I said in, the, in, in India, we have a media judgment of Supreme Court which says, a state has to act reasonably and fairly, even in contractual matters. I started by saying, I have yet to see any judgment of this country which says that the state will not act fairly in Bengal and matters. That was when the statement somehow brought me that invention or But finally, when you go before the courts, when you argue full length in, on, the, on the Bengal and laws, ultimately what you get is they will refer to all the judgments and they will dismiss your claim. So this is the situation as of now. I have no more to say. Thank you very much.